Con grande piacere adesso do spazio alla CGL, Salvatore Marra che è di ritorno anche dal congresso della CES e che a cui do la parola. Grazie mille, um, vedo molte persone che ascoltano, I see many people using headphones, so I'd like to also welcome you in English and give you a break maybe after having listened to so much Italian, so maybe other Italian speaking people can just uh, listen to, Italy, to, 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 sorry, to English and Italian in the headphones. Um, I will just start by saying that uh, moments like this are very important because I think that transnational dimension of mobilizing and uniting against, uh, around values like democracy, peace, and transforming our societies is, is absolutely, absolutely crucial and essential. I am head of the international at the largest uh, trade union center here in Italy, CGIL, the Italian General Confederation of Labor. And, um, As the chair just said, we've uh, just concluded the, um, the ETUC Congress, the Congress of the European Trade Union Confederation, where representatives for, from more than 80 organizations in, in, in Europe gathered to discuss around the actual situation in a continent that is torn by war and uh, by many crises. There's so many crises we've been going through in the last few years. We're going to participate acti actively also in the program of the Future Factory, organizing an event the day after tomorrow here in Rome. And um, so we, we feel part of, uh, of, this, of this movement. I will make just a uh, very few points because many of the things uh, that we've been discussing so far are shared. So I'd like to really give to you the contribution of uh, and the views of the trade union movement on the moment we're going through. Uh, first, uh, uh, first uh, reflection is I think we all have to make very clear that the, the austerity recipe has been a failed recipe to fix uh, the uh, crisis. Governments have been proposing austerity as the solution to the crisis we've been going through. Well, uh, it's At, there is evidence, even statistical evidence, that this is not the case. Austerity produced, first of all, more impoverishment in terms of richness of the uh, people. So m few, very few people becoming billionaires and very rich, most of the working class becoming poorer and poorer. So this is the first problem that we have to fix. Making policy makers understand that austerity is not an option any longer. Why am I saying that? Because if you look at the moves of the European Commission at the moment, of the decision makers also at nat national level, we, we, we see them moving again towards cutting budgets, impoverishing pu public services, cutting the uh, support to the poorest. So this is something we have to face and we absolutely have to stop them somehow. Um, the other issue is, of course, war. CGIL has been under attack, real attack, because we are one of the very few trade union organizations, mass organizations, we still have about six million members, saying weapons are not the solutions. We oppose any military solution to the war. So, uh, unfortunately, we've been attacked. And we've said, sending a letter to the MEPs voting last week, we are absolutely against distorting the European funds from the next generation EU to the production of weapons. This is uh, not only an attack, but an insult to the people who died during the pandemic, because the next generation EU is public money, which is the fruit of our mobilization to stop you know, the pandemic and save lives. So we're using that money to kill people and it's absolutely unacceptable in our view. And we invited all MEPs to vote against, uh, against this, uh, this solution. Third and last point, what can we do? Because uh, the, the trend, I, will, uh, I won't dwell any longer in the trend we're through. So uh, as, as we said, of course, we need to have a clear Uh, the strategy in terms of contents and what I heard uh, I'm not going to repeat again but we also think that we need to give people 
a prospect for mobilization, because what happened in France is uh, an example, in our opinion. The fight of the French Union in terms of stopping that austerity-led reform on, uh, uh, on pensions is maybe lost because the reform is through, but there is a movement in France which is ready to mobilize again against those pol policies. We believe that this is very important to happen at the national level for sure, but there is a European and I would even say a global dimension where we have to go and be more courageous all in all. Uh, we're starting in Italy, mobilizing on the 24th of June around health care, because health care has been one of the main, it's, it's absurd if you think about it, because after the pandemic you would think that all member states and the Commission itself, the European institutions, would have invested l lots of money into the health care, but they're cutting on health budget, and you see many and many people having to go to the private services to take care of their own health, which is absolutely unbelievable and unacceptable. So together with a coalition of Italian NGOs and civil society, the trade union is mobilizing on the 24th on health care. So we're going to oppose the uh, terrible reform that the government, this government, this fascist government, I will say it very clear, in Italy, is proposing in terms of reform forming our constitution, uh, constitution moving towards a presidential republic and limiting the uh, prerogatives of the, uh, of the Italian parliament. This is on the 30th of September. That mobilization will put together the, uh, the, the theme of peace, again, together with the protection of our constitution, all in all, because our constitution, as I heard before, is founded and based on protection of peace. Last but not least, we said that this movement is only successful, can only be successful, if it happens at European level. This is why we have been the promoters of a, a resolution at the European Trade Union Confederation Congress, where we invite all trade union organizations to organize strikes, general strikes as possible at national level, as, we, as it was the case in 2017, I don't know if you remember already, the European Day of Mobilization and national demonstrations at all levels, maybe with a huge demonstration in October in Brussels to uh, send a very clear messages to the civil society, to the people who are going to vote in European elections in the next few months to ask for a change and a stop of austerity, a stop of war, more social justice, stop to precarization of work, Patrizia mentioned that before, and of course more money into wages and pensions of people who are again at risk of starving really because there is also uh, a ch ch children, ch children's poverty increasing. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you very much and welcome again.